In this video, I'm going to talk about distance time curve and speed time curve. But now it involves two objects moving in different motion and we're going to see how their motion interact with each other. Do take note that the two graphs here, they are not related and they are of different scenario. But one thing in common in both of them is the intersection point that you see over here and over here. Do they mean the same thing? Later on, we are going to talk about that. Now let's start with the graph on the left here, which is the distant time curve. There's one thing that I need you to know about distant time and that is the gradient, which is rise over run, change in y over change in x. In this case, that will be the change in the distance over the change in time. And that's basically your speed. In other words, the gradient represents the speed. Okay, now let's give this graph a, a context. You can imagine that the cyclists A and B, they're having a race and both are at the starting point when time equals to zero. And so there's a finishing line here at certain distance. So both will move differently until when they reach the finishing line, they will stop. So now let's describe the motion for A and B. Now for A, you can see that it curved this way. Okay, so just now I already mentioned that the gradient represents your speed. So in this case, you can see that the gradient is increasing. It's getting steeper and steeper. Therefore, increasing gradient, increasing speed. So it's accelerating. So from this point, time equals to 20, cyclist A is not moving at rest meaning to say it has reached the finishing point. And for motion B, you can see that this is a constant gradient. The steepness never change. So constant gradient, constant speed. Then it's the same thing at time equals to 25. From then onwards, it's at rest. So you have reached its finishing point. Now let's answer some questions regarding the cyclist. For example, the first one, who is ahead first at the beginning of the race? So you can, there are two ways to doing that. For example, if you look at the timing here, for that specific time, you from the graph, you look at the y-axis, which is the distance, you can see the distance traveled by the cyclist A. And for the same time, this is the distance traveled by the cyclist B. And it's obvious that the distance covered by B is larger, so B will be ahead first. Another way to look at it is both start from rest at the beginning of the race, and you can see that the gradient, which tells you the speed of the cyclist, and because the gradient of B is greater, so the speed of B from the beginning of the race is higher than A, so B will be ahead first. Next, regarding the intersection point over here. Now, at this point, what does it mean? It means to say that at time equals to 18 seconds, both the cyclist A and cyclist B covered the same distance from the starting point. Okay, and maybe let's give it a value 350 meters. It means to say that the overtaking has taken place. B is ahead initially, so at time equals to 18, A catches up. And you have to take note that when the overtaking is taking place, both the cyclists must have traveled the same distance. So in this case, it's at 350 and it's at time equals to 18. So intersection points will mean the overtaking is taking place over there. The next question here, who will reach the finishing line first? As you can see from here, Cyclist A, at time equals to zero, it comes to a complete stop. And just now previously, we mentioned that when they reach the finishing line, they will come to a complete stop. And A takes 20 seconds, while B will take 25 seconds. So A actually finished the race first. And the last question here, what is the length of the race? Now, length is the like a distance, but this is not area under the graph. Some students always get it wrong. This is a distant time curve. So basically, you're not looking at the area. You basically look at the y-axis here, which is the distance. And for both, they will stop when they, reaches the, when they reach the finishing line. So you can see that the race, very obvious, will just be 500 meters. Let's go to the speed time curve now. 
For speed time curve, there are two things that you must remember. Firstly, the gradient, which is rise over run. In this case, speed over time, or rather velocity over time, is like your u minus v minus u over t, and that will give you the acceleration of the object. And secondly, area underneath the graph will represent the distance traveled by the object. So let's take a look at the scenario, give it some context here. You can imagine that likewise from a starting point, B is right now at the starting point and A you can imagine that is always moving at a constant speed coming from behind. And when A reaches this point side by side with B, that is where the race starts. But B starts from rest while A continues to move at a constant speed of 16 meter per second. Next, let's go and answer some questions. We start with who is ahead first. From the graph, if you understand that, as mentioned just now, B started from rest because at time equals to zero, the speed here is zero. So B starts from rest while A at the beginning of the race at time equals to zero is already traveling at 16 meter per second. So obviously A will be ahead first. Another way to look at it is the distance travel. Let's give it a unknown time here at the beginning of the race. So in order to find the distance covered by A and B at time equals to T, you basically look for the area underneath the graph fall. So for this case, this is the triangle and for A here, that will be the whole rectangle over here. So obviously the distance travel by a is much greater than the distance by B, so A will be ahead first. Next, what does the intersection mean over here? Now basically it means that at time equals to 8 seconds, both car A and car B, if you look at the Y axis, they are traveling at the same speed. So here just basically means that they have the same speed, 16 meter per second. Does it mean that at this intersection point, the overtaking is taking place here? Okay, the answer is no, because one way to look at it is, previously we mentioned that car B starts from rest and is undergo constant acceleration. But from time zero to eight seconds, the speed, if you look at the Y axis, the speed of car B is always slower than car A. So overtaking is not taking place here. It is unlike, is unlike the distant time curve. For distant time curve, yes, the intersection point is where the overtaking is taking place. But for speed time curve, it basically means that both car, they have the same speed. Another way to explain to you why at time t, the overtaking has not taken place at this intersection point is by looking at the distance. Previously, we mentioned that the area underneath the graph will represent the distance travel. So let's take a look at their respective distance. For car B, the distance traveled by car B till 8 seconds, it will be the area of the triangle over here. And for car A, this will be the area under the graph, the distance traveled by car A, which is the area of the rectangle much bigger than the area of the triangle. So you can see that even at time equals to 8 seconds, the distance of A is still greater than the distance of B. So a will still continue to be ahead of B. Now, as for the last question, so what time does the overtaking take place then? So for this, I will cover in the next video.